We are continuing on our study of He Said, She Says, what God says is final. We're doing this because when we first started our teaching, um, we, we did not have the essence or the attributes um, on video. So we want to make sure that we get these covered. And uh, just to do a, a, a little bit of a, of a recap, we know that within the Trinity, we know we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We did teach on God the Father. We did teach on God the Son. We, of course, have been teaching on God the Holy Spirit for many weeks, but we took a break from that so that I could get caught up with these. Now, we've got two more attributes left, omniscience and omnipresence. Those are the two that we haven't taught yet. We've already taught on sovereignty, righteousness, justice, love, eternal life, immutability, and veracity. So we've got omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence left. We know that all of these attributes represent the Trinity, and they are all co-equal, co-infinite, and co-eternal, meaning God the Father has all of these attributes equal and forever. God the Son, same thing. God the Holy Spirit, same thing. This teaching is important because many times people want to teach what man has taught them, but not what the Bible says. So, like we learned on Sunday, that God is, tr everything about God is true. And so because that's the case, now we want to talk about His power. And one of the things about His power that many people don't realize is that it's, of course, co-equal with all the other uh, members of the Trinity. We also know that it's co-infinite, meaning his power will be forever. There isn't a time that he's not powerful. He is all-powerful, and his power is infinite. We're going to start tonight in the book of Hosea. H-O-S-E-A. Hosea. Hosea, can you see it? My only joke. So we're doing omniscience tonight. We're doing omnipotence. Can we spell that? O M N I P O T E N C E. Omnipotence. Now we're going to go to Hosea 4. Hosea is after Daniel. Hosea 9. Hosea 4. One. This is our bit of, this is our introduction to the omnipotence. It says, listen to the word of the Lord, O sons of Israel. For the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land. Because there is no faithfulness or kindness or knowledge of God in the land. There is swearing, deception, murder, stealing, and adultery. They employ violence so that bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and everyone who lives in it languishes, along with the beasts of the field and the birds of the sky, and also the fish of the sea disappear. Yet let no one find fault, and let none offer reproof. For your people are like those who contend with the priest. So you will stumble by day, and the prophet also will stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother, referring to the nation. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because you have rejected knowledge. I also will reject you from being my priest, since you have forgotten the law of your God. I also will forget your children. Now, why this passage is so important? The most important part of this is when it says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. These passages suggest and state very clearly, not suggest, forgive me, they state very clearly that at this time, that no one was interested in the word. 
So many people were under a lot of distress, but it was by God's power that took his word and made his word available to those who were interested. See, that takes power. And divine power. And see, God has that power. He has that power to align us in positions where we're going to receive his word. Now, we're going to read in the Bible about God's power. You were right, Keith. Go to Genesis. Chapter 17, which we've been there before. This is an example of how his name means power. Genesis 17, verse 1. Now when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said to him, I am God Almighty. Almighty represents God's power. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will establish my covenant between me and you. How does he establish his covenant? with his power and I will multiply you exceedingly how does he do it with his power power from God the Father the power from God the Son and obviously the power of the Holy Spirit now go to Exodus All right. there. chapter 9 I'm going to give you a, a large amount of passages that talk about God's power. The Trinity's power, actually, because they all share the same power. Exodus chapter 9, starting at verse 16. Oh, let's go to 15. <laughs> For if by now I had put forth my hand and struck you, referring to his power, and your people with pestilence, you would then have been cut off from the earth. But he didn't do that. But indeed, for this cause, I have allowed you to remain. So by his power, he caused them to remain. Just like where you are in your life, his power is what causes you to remain. In order to show you what? What are the next two words? My power. My power. You see? Aren't you glad, Carol, that the Bible is so clear? And in order to what? Proclaim my name through all the earth. So as a result of his power causes us to share the good news. Flip a couple pages over to Exodus 13. Starting at verse 3. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify, I'm sorry, verse 3. And Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you went out from Israel, or Egypt, from the house of slavery, for by a what? Powerful hand. The Lord brought you out from this place. Again, by his power. Now, keep going to the right to 1 Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 29 starting at verse 11 well let's go to 10 just so we can get context It 
So David praised the Lord. Your Bible one might say blessed, but it's actually praised the Lord. In the sight of all the assembly, and David said, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Indeed, everything that is in the heavens and on the earth, thine is the dominion, O Lord, and thou dost exalt thyself as head over all. We also heard this passage regarding his sovereignty because he's head over all. But it says here he's powerful. Flip over to 2 Chronicles, which is after it, chapter 25. Second Chronicles 25, starting at verse 8. But if you do go, do it, be strong for the battle, yet God will bring you down before the enemy, for God has what? Power to help and to bring down. Keep going. Go over to the book of Job, which is a couple books over. Chapter 26. This, to me, is the most powerful, no pun intended, passage regarding God's power. If you really want to understand how strong God is, this passage right here, I don't think there's any greater passage than this. I could have started with this, but I didn't want to. I wanted to go in order so we could go from the left to the right, so that as you mark down in your Bible, you write power, power, so you know that that's what this passage is about. Job 26, verse 7. Yeah. Says, He stretches out the north over empty space and hangs the earth on nothing. He supports the earth on his own. That's pretty powerful. Are there any strings that hold up the earth? Or support belts? Or is earth on a stand? No. God secures it. He holds it. That's power. Now go to Psalm, which is to your right. Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Verse 8. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. See? He's strong and mighty. Now I know this is becoming a bit repetitious, but you need to see it. Psalm 93 now. His power comes in all shapes and all sizes. Psalm 93, verse 1 says, The Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord has clothed and girded himself with what? Strength. Indeed, the world is firmly established. It will not be moved. Can you go and move the earth? Uh, no. Half the time you can barely, barely move your body. Imagine having to move the earth. Earth ain't moving. But he could move it. Psalm 147. Starting in verse 5. Omnipotence means powerful. One forty seven, verse five. 
says, Great is our Lord and abundant in what? Strength. His, his understanding is infinite. Same now, thing as strong, right? Huh? Same thing as strong, right? Absolutely correct. And strong represents his power. Now, turn to the right, keep going past Proverbs to Isaiah, verse 40, or chapter 40, starting at verse 26. Isaiah 40. Verse 26. It's, I love how he this passage is. He says, lift up your eyes. All you have, could you, how much power does it take to go like this? All right? He's about to show your measly power with his power. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these stars, the one who leads forth their host by number. He calls them all by name because of the greatness of his might and the strength of his what? Power. He compare, I love that. He compares you looking up to him creating the stars. Talk about a contrast. I mean, all you got to do is move your neck. For him, if he wants to move a star, all he has to do is think it and it moves. Go to Isaiah 43. A couple pages over. Verse 13. The Lord shall go 43 verse 13 says even from eternity I am he and there is none who can deliver out of my hand I act and who can reverse it you can't because he's so powerful there's nothing we can do about it go to the right to Jeremiah next book 27 Jeremiah 27. What? Jeremiah what? There you go. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Shut up. Was a good friend of mine. <laughs> Chapter 27. Verse 5. I have made the earth, the men, and the beast which are on the face of the earth, but by my great, what? Power. Power. And by my outstretched arm, and I will give it to the one who is pleasing in my sight. He will give power to the one who is pleasing to his sight. I've got the power. You know where our power comes from? Through him. Yeah. That's yeah. it. And here, behind me, is a banner. What does it say? For the word of God is alive and powerful. So the power, many people today want to take credit for the power that God uses us through. Like, he gives me the power to communicate. It's not my gift, it's His. It's through His power that I'm able to deliver it. If I didn't have a voice, and I had to whisper like this, how powerful would the sermon be? Not very powerful. But He gives me a voice, just like He gave Adrian Rogers a voice, to preach powerfully. I wish I could preach like him. I want to preach like him. I don't preach. He's not as funny as I am. 
but he sounds much better and he's much smarter. But he's also dead. So his work is done. So now I've passed, he's passed the baton to me to take over. No, he hasn't. It's a funny joke, though. His power guarantees that nothing is impossible with him. Nothing? What part of nothing is nothing? Nothing. Nothing is impossible with him. Now you get to see the passages that talk about how nothing is impossible with him. I'm going to give them to you, write these down, then we'll read them. Genesis 18, 14, we're going to write them down first. Then we'll go back and read them. Genesis 18, 14, Job 42, 2, Jeremiah 32, 27, Matthew 19, 26, Mark 10, 27, and Luke 1, 37. Let's go back to Genesis. 18. Verse 14. Why don't you go ahead and read that, Pam? I almost was going to say my wife, but I realize there's only one Pam here now. Dang it. I'm telling I want to get a little cardboard thing. There we go. Put her up over here and get, pull a little speaker, you know. Is go, oh, I'm sorry, Pam's gonna read it. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Question mark. Is there? No. 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 At the appointed time I will return to you at this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. And what happened? She had a son. Let's go to Job forty two. That's after Psalm and Proverbs. Or before. Sorry, Psalm. Job 42, verses 2. Carol, I'll have you read that. Job 42, verse 2. I know that you can do all things, all things of yours can be Woo, that means good luck trying to change God's plan. You can't, because why? Because he, he uh, knows solid. that thou can do all things. What were you saying, Keith? He's already solid. It's That's already it. Solid. Okay, time to go to the Bullfrog book. Bullfrog, chapter 32, verse 27. <laughs> that would be Jeremiah for those that don't get that joke. It's all right. We forgive you. Jeremiah 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord. The God of all flesh. Is anything too difficult for me? You know what I love about that passage? Behold, I am, which is his name, the Lord, his title. Nothing. Is anything too difficult for me? No. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 19. You don't have any of these circled, do you? Oh, I must have taught this on one of my Bible training. Mm -hmm. Matthew 19, verse 26. And looking upon them, Jesus said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. All things are possible. Scooch over to the right to Mark, chapter 10. Verse 27. 
looking upon them. Jesus said, with men is it impossible? With men it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Swing over to the next book, Luke. Chapter 1. Verse 37. For nothing will be impossible with God. Did you know that all these passages existed? You can't get much clearer. And it's possible because of his power that it's possible. Here's some side notes. God does all that he does because of his character. God does all that he does because of his character. Because of his power, he doesn't contradict himself ever. Ever. That means out of the Bible, there's not one contradiction. Talk about power with all the authors, with all the translations, with everything. None. It takes power to do that. No other book do you have that. His power is beyond comprehension. You know, God says this in his word. That his power is beyond comprehension. I'm going to give you four passages. Isaiah 44. 24 through 26. Isaiah 44. 24 through 26. 2 Corinthians 4. 6 through 7. Ephesians 1. 17 through 20 and Ephesians 3 20 through 21 let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 44 verse 24 his power is beyond comprehension Thus says the Lord your thus says the Lord your redeemer and the one who formed you from the womb I the Lord am the maker of all things stretching out the heavens by myself and spreading out the earth all alone causing the omens of boasters to fail making fools out of diviners causing wise men to draw back and turning their knowledge into foolishness Confirming the word of his servant and performing the purpose of his messengers. It is I who says of Jerusalem, she, sh she shall be inhabited. And of the cities of Judah, they shall be built and I will raise up her ruins again. It is I who says to the depths of the sea, be dried up and I will make your rivers dry. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians 4, verse 6. For God who said, light shall shine out of darkness. See, we don't understand when that happens. Is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from ourselves. That's why we don't understand why he does what he does sometimes. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 
verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom. See, you don't have it. So he gives you the spirit and of revelation in the knowledge of him. It's by his power that you receive that. Do you understand it half the time? No. But he makes sure you have it. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of what? His power toward us who believe. These in accordance with the working of the strength of his might with which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him as his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and what? Power and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. God can do all he wills to do. God can do all he wills to do. But may not will to do all he can do. One more time. God can do all he wills to do. But he may not will to do all he can do. You know what that means? Read it again. God can do all that he wills to do. But he may not will to do all that he can do. He could do a lot of things, but he might not want to do it. But when he wants to do it, he does it. And he doesn't need permission. <laughs> He's got his own power. He does it on his own. And his power belongs to him and him alone. He doesn't sleep. He never gets tired. Sometimes we think he does. Where is he? He must be an absentee landlord. No, he's here. He knows. By his power, he knows. Let's go to the book of Colossians. Just two books over to your right. Chapter 1. Did we go to Ephesians 3.20? We did that already. When? Before that. Didn't we? Ephesians 3. No! Good catch, Pam. That's where I'm at now. Good! Excellent! Ephesians 3, verse 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and to Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Colossians, chapter 1. Verse 16. For by him and his power, all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself might come to have first place in everything. You see why we should prioritize God? Because he's got the power. Go to 1 Corinthians, which is to your left. Chapter 2, verse 5. 
1 Corinthians 2, verse 5. That your faith should not rest on the wisdom of men, but on what? Power. The power of God. See? You see why it's so important for us to know that He's got power? So that we don't rely on the wisdom of men. My goodness, how many times do we rely on man? Huh. Many times. Right. Too many times. Way too many times. I don't work. That's why it's important for us to know that God is in control. I just had a conversation with two apostles last night. They got mad at me because I questioned what they posted. They said I was out of order for correcting them. I'm sorry, but when you try and say things that are not biblical, I'm going to say something. So I have two less friends on Facebook. Because I just I'm not playing. I don't have time to play. If I say something, the only reason why I speak up is because God says, tell them what I said. And they're going to reject you. So when they do, just unfriend them. Don't worry about it. Move on. If they don't heed the words that you give them, wipe the dust off your feet and move on. That's what I do. Because I'm not relying on man. If they don't want to hear the truth, if they're not humble enough, then that's it. It's about God's power, not ours. We are the recipient of His power. Why? Why do you think, Carol, we would be the recipient of His power? What would be the reason? Why would He give us that power? Any idea? Huh? Yeah. Do you think it's to hit people over the head? No. No. How do we fulfill our spiritual life? With His power. <laughs> yes! That's how we succeed in the spiritual life. There was a, uh, a friend of, of, our, of the family, uh, extended family, who just got saved and baptized. So I felt it was important for me to give some words of wisdom. Now, is she going to realize that all the power that she has is of God? And that everything that she does is either going to be for God or against God? I don't know. But it's through His power that we successfully fulfill our spiritual life. The power of the Word of God is what circulates in our soul. The unique assets of the church age including 1 John 1, 9, and faith rest, and all those problem-solving solutions, those are all assets that we have access to. It includes the filling of the Holy Spirit. That took power. When we do things outside the filling of the Holy Spirit because we've sinned and we haven't acknowledged it, then what power is in it? Nothing. It's our own manly power. It also includes the function of the spiritual gifts. See, each one of us have gifts. God gave us those. It's part of His power. And those gifts we utilize through His power. See, if we're not in fellowship with Him and we're doing our own thing, there is no power to what we're doing. So we're not utilizing our spiritual gift. I know someone very close to me, probably one of the most special people in my life who doesn't even talk to me right now. She was given a gift to sing. And God told me to tell her, if you don't stop smoking, you're going to lose that gift. She didn't believe me. She's lost it. Can she get it back? Oh, yeah. Sure she can. I thought God's powerful. If she turns her life around and says, God, I disobeyed you, he'll give her the gift back. Better than it was in the beginning. And she'll be more passionate because she understands how much power he has. Right now she thinks she's got the power. She's heard snap too much. I've got the power. <laughs> no, you don't. God's got the power. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Who's got the power, Keith? God. God. 
I'm so glad you could join us, Keith. Ephesians 3, chapter 1. Talk about power, watch this. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace, which was given to me, for who? You. That by revelation there was made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in brief. And by referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. I'm sorry, how can you understand the mystery of Christ? By doing what? Reading. Imagine that which in other generations was not made known. Why? Why was it not made known? The Bible wasn't done, that's right. To the sons of men, as it has now been revealed. How has it been revealed? Who's made it revealed? The Holy Spirit. To his holy apostles, prophets in the Spirit. You see that right there. It has been revealed to who? The holy apostles and prophets. See, this is the big argument regarding prophets today. The real apostles and prophets, power was given to them to complete what? The Bible. You got people today running around. I got a, a, a very dear friend of mine from Africa who had a picture of his baby on Facebook. He said, here's Apostle Rodney. <laughs> the first thought I had was this apostle can't even wipe his own back and he's an apostle? come on the apostle Paul made the requirements of apostles so clear he said I am an apostle for have I not seen the Lord? that's why I've seen it a true you've apostle you've already seen it a true apostle has seen the Lord. Yep. That's what the Bible says. But I like the title Apostle. I'm the great senior bishop apostle of apostles. I might not want to think so highly of myself, huh? Otherwise I'll fall off the tree. But that's not it. Look at this. This is so fabulous. Hold on. Verse 5 again, which in other generations was not made known to the sons of men as it has now been revealed in his holy apostles and prophets in the spirit. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through what? The gospel. No. Of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given to me according to the working of his power. power. See that? Man. To me the very least of all the saints, Paul <laughs> the very least of all, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring light what is the administration or dispensation or this time of the mystery which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things in order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through what? The church. To the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confidence, access through faith in him. Therefore I ask you not to lose heart at my tribulations on your behalf, for they are for your glory. Now, go to 2 Thessalonians, which is to your right, a couple pages over. 2 Thessalonians 1. That passage was deep right there. Like we could be on that for three weeks. At another time. We'll get there eventually. We're still in Genesis. Got some way to go. <laughs> Second Thessalonians one, verse eleven.
To this end also we pray for you always that our God may count you worthy of your calling and fulfill every desire for goodness and the work of faith with what? Power. Power. In order that the name of our Lord may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know God, you don't have to know his power. Go to 1 Peter. It's to the right. Chapter 1. Verse 5. referring to us are protected by the power of God through what? Faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Go to 2 Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, uh oh, of God and Jesus our Lord. Knowledge. No uh huh. Thank you, Keith. Seeing that is divine what? Power. Power <laughs> has granted to us everything pertaining to life. Hello? People don't get it. And godliness through the true what? Knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. But what else do we need? Nothing. His power is what gets us through everything. But we want to do it on our own. Can't. You can't. What a teaching, huh? Power. Power and understanding. Father God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for this time. Father, we most importantly thank you for your power that has carried us through each and every day. We thank you that we can read about your power in your word and that your word is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of our soul and the spirit. Our dividing asunder is the deepest part of our soul and our spirit and our joints and a marrow. And we know that your word is a critic of thoughts and is knows the intentions of the heart. We know that all scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, teaching, reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. Why? So we can become mature and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why we study to show ourselves approved unto you as workmen who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, it is by your power that we rightly divide the word of truth. It is by your power that when I sit down each and every day to study your word, I do it because I want your power. And your power is in the word, and I can't do it without it. That would be like going to battle without ammunition. And I thank you so much for the protection that you put over this house, over this church, over the people of this church. And Father, I just pray that when we gather on Sunday, that we will continue to share about your grace and goodness and love. And Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us each and every day, and we love you. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.